Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for watching. Um, this is no joke like the fifth or sixth time I've tried to make this video, not only today, but within the last couple days, I can't get it straight. So I'm gonna try to get it right this time. What we're talking about is the concealed carry community as a whole, okay? I'm not going in political advocate kind of stuff and just talking about whatever. It's kind of specific as far as um, what groups of people that I see that I categorize as those that carry firearms. Um, what category I would put myself in, and then to answer some questions that some people have put, not specific questions, but the questions generalized as a whole in some of my videos where people have called me out and been like, you know, why are you carrying this gun? What were you doing that you needed to have it round in the chamber? And those kind of questions that you hear those people. So I'm going to kind of answer that, but before I answer that kind of question, I'm going to kind of categorize everybody how I see it, and that might help answer that question, okay? So, you have your, the people that carry firearms, and this is the way I see it, my personal opinions and all this stuff, this is not any official statement by any big whatever, this is me, this is how I see it, okay? Just me talking to you, this is how it is. Um, you have your professionals, all right, your military and law enforcement that carry firearms for work, okay? And I guess you could put private contractor and all that kind of stuff. The people that carry a firearm for work, okay? That's, that's one category, okay? You have your... Um, your sheepdog or your responsible civilian, whatever you want to, however you want to say that, but your responsible civilian that carries a firearm to protect himself and those immediately around them. Okay, that's what he carries a gun for. That's it. Simple, plain and simple. Then you also have your your prepper-ish kind of community to where they're more or less, you know, they're carrying guns to protect themselves not only from themselves but from the government and from from zombies and maybe throw in a couple little different, you know, uh, paranormal things in there to where, yeah, it's kind of, they're kind of, they're, they're usually the kind of the goofy crowd, just a little bit goofy, you know, they're not dangerous necessarily. They're just kind of goofy and it's America and they can be goofy and that's fine with me, you know, but that, that's okay. They're the kind of guys that would carry like, you know, a big old revolver, you know, or a desert eagle or, you know, something kind of ridiculous and it's big and it's kind of obnoxious and it's loud, that kind of person, okay? To where it's not so much a utility tool, the gun, you know, it's not like I'm gonna carry a Smith & Wesson shield because it's small and, and light and I can carry it on me and it's no big deal. It's not those folks, it's the folks that are like, I'm gonna carry a big bad gun so that people see me, they're gonna run away. Okay, see that? And then you also have your very, very, very small, very small group of people that are so paranoid and so whatever, and I don't even know if it, you want to call it paranoia, but they're itching to pull the trigger on somebody, okay? I'm not going to say that these folks shouldn't have guns necessarily because it is our constitutional right to be able to have, own, carry, and use firearms, so I'm not going to say when you strip people of their rights, but there are people out there that are a little irresponsible, and say that, they're a little irresponsible, and they're a little scary-ish when it comes to, to firearms. That's all I'm gonna say about that, okay? Or not all, but that's all I'm gonna categorize that. So those are your different kind of people. You have your, your professionals, you have your responsible citizens slash sheepdog, you got your prepper-ish community kind of thing, nothing against them, but that's their, their own, a little bit different, and then you got your wackadoos, okay? Just leave them there. Those are how I see it. How I put myself, I would say I'm the responsible citizen slash sheepdog. That's how I see it. I carry a gun just for personal protection for myself and for those immediately around me. Um, I get a little bit, I still kind of rabbit trail, but it kind of answers the question. Um, I did, and I've said it before, I've worked in law enforcement. I was a deputy sheriff, you know, and the folks that are deputy sheriffs or law enforcement, whatever, the people that work in those fields, even a lot of military, you know, but law enforcement specifically, people that work in those fields, they generally have a calling or they have something in their in their heart, something in their soul, whatever, that will not let them stand by and watch other people get hurt, okay? There are people that have that, if you want to call it a calling or feeling, whatever you want, whatever it is, people that have that, that aren't in law enforcement, but in general, in general, folks that are in law enforcement have that. So when they get out of law enforcement, that whole responsibility to help those around them, it doesn't go away. It's still there. Granted, the longer you're in, I've seen other folks do it, and I could kind of see how it could happen. I wasn't in very long, but you can get cynical towards a lot of people when you're in law enforcement, but 
when you see people legitimately getting hurt, you really do care about them and you really do want to help. That's the whole thing. You want to help folks. All right. And again, that's I say that with a caveat that, you know, there are some people out there, whatever, that get into law enforcement for the wrong reasons and stuff. But that is how it, that's how I was. All right. And I can say that's how I still am. If I see somebody getting hurt or I see something happening and I can do something to stop it. I feel like I need to do that, and I, that's why I put this sheepdog in there with the uh, responsible citizen, because it's kind of the same thing. It just almost takes it another step past personal, just personal protection, because I might get into scenarios, probably not because I'll we'll end up rambling about it, but that's how I see it, okay? So, that's how I categorize myself, and so to move on to kind of answer the question that has been posed to me before, I don't have specific questions because there's a bunch of comments and stuff and I don't want to weed through there. But in general, what people will ask and how they come off in their question, their statements or questions or whatever, is they'll be like, why did you need a gun in the, or a gun? Why did you need a, a round in the chamber? You know, what were you doing that you had to have a gun? And they'll ask these questions and it's hard to really gauge their what they really mean by their question in a comment because there's no visual whatever I can't see your face I can't I can't read your you know your tone it's hard but what I get from that is that they're almost in a judging way they're 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 questioning why in the world do I even need a gun and people have said that why do you even need a gun okay well and and not only that I've kind of answered that but not only that but also they go the step beyond that and that's really what I'm going to answer they go the step beyond that and they kind of accuse me and in the same way that group of the responsible citizen folks of thinking that we're like, you know, the Rambo kind of people. You know, we're just out there itching to shoot somebody. We can't wait for the day that, that something happens and we get to go, you know, cuff to fist and just beat somebody up and pull our gun and shoot someone. All right. That is what it appears a lot of people kind of put that on the Second Amendment community, whatever, however you want to call it, uh, for free society people, whatever. Um, that's kind of the facade that they put on us. And like I said earlier, there there is an extreme small micro fraction percentage of a group of people that are like that. Yeah. So I'm not going to – and maybe they ran across one of those people one time and it's ruined their, their whole image of folks that carry guns and they think that guns are just evil. Maybe that's what happened, I don't know. But um, but the thing, the thing that I would question with them, the thing that I would ask them, and, and, and I really wish that I could ask them in person, and not, I'm not gonna ask them online because again, you can't, they can't see that I'm serious about asking the question and I can't see how they're responding, but I could seriously ask the question on here, maybe you can tell me in the comments if you're one of those people that think that us Second Amendment people are like that, if it came down to brass tacks, okay, if it came down to it and you were in a situation, think of whatever situation you want to be, but the situation has gone from bad to worse to horrible to terrible to deadly, okay? There's no, there's no communicating with this, with, we'll call them the, the suspect or whatever. There's no negotiating or convincing him to do otherwise. He's actively killing people. Okay, and like this is the worst case scenario, okay? If there's an individual in your close vicinity in your personal space that's actively killing people, are you going would you prefer to have somebody by your side and will in YouTube terms we'll say, you know, somebody like like uh uh Hickok forty five or somebody like uh James Yeager? Okay, and just strictly dealing, we're going to cut out all the other people that don't believe in the Second Amendment and all that stuff, you know, but the folks that obviously do believe in the Second Amendment, would you rather have a Hickok 45 or would you rather have a James Yeager standing there by your side? And again, understand, this is not a situation where somebody could be talked down. This is a guy pulling a trigger killing people or stabbing people or whatever, whatever it might be. Horrible situation, all right? I would assume if anybody knows either of those two people, and surely if you're on YouTube and you know anything about guns and you watch many gun channels, you've surely at least heard of these two individuals. You know, you got Hickok45, who's a big guy, but he seems about as chill. I've never met the guy, but he seems about as chill and relaxed and calm as you could ever want to meet somebody, okay? But he can shoot, okay? And he even mentions carrying guns and stuff, so 
I would only assume, since what he says is that he does carry a gun. They also have the people like James Yeager, and for those that don't know, James Yeager is just completely way, like, outspoken, yes, Second Amendment, but also, I mean, he's had his concealed carry license, like, revoked and different things. It's been given back and stuff because he, he's very out there. He puts his... He puts his voice out there and he says things and he's brash and he's just rough on the edges and stuff. But – and he can fight, okay? And that's his thing is that th he's the kind of guy that I think a lot of these folks are like, yeah, you think you're Mr. Rambo or you think you're Mr. whatever. You're going to go out and shoot everybody. I don't I've, – again, I've never met Hickok 45 or James Yeager. But in, in this kind of thing, this context, what I'm trying to say is that with James Yeager, I don't think he's really – I don't know how much of his facade he puts on for, for the camera. I don't think he's really that kind of guy that wants to go around and just kill everybody. He seems to be a gentleman and a very good guy, just rough. And that's just, that's fine. Okay, but going back to that scenario, if you're in that situation, I would think, and if you're completely honest, I think all of us would pick a Jane Jager to be right by us. In a, in a, in a knockdown, drag out fight, Okay, you're going to want somebody that's a little crazy. You're going to want somebody that's going to do what needs to be done to defend you and defend those around them and defend themselves. You're going to want somebody, you know, that's not going to hold punches. Okay? Responsibly, but you're, when it comes time, you got to flip that switch and you got to become that person to defend those around you. I'm not saying Hickok 45 can't do that, but I think you know what I'm saying. So... <sighs> That's what I would say to those people. That, that, that's not what I would say to them. That's kind of what I would ask them, what I would want to know, okay? Even from people from other countries, okay? Because from what I get on a lot of these comments, people say this from different countries, and, and it's hard to even communicate with them on, on this level because they don't have the rights that we have. They don't have necessarily the people, the kind of people that we have. In a way, they do, but they don't. I mean, you don't have people walking around with guns because in their society that just doesn't happen. I mean, only bad guys do because the good guys all turn their guns in or whatever. So, in those people's situation, I would even want to know from them if you're in a country that you you know you can't have firearms, you're of the idea that you know all Americans are just cowboys walking around with guns on their hips. You know, if you got into a situation, whatever it might be, whatever horrible situation, and there's people killing other people around you, wouldn't you want? somebody who's crazy enough to stand up and to defend you, you know, and to, and to do that for you, I think any and all of us would want that versus saying, I don't, what, what I think is, I, I don't think anybody's a actually going to say, no, I don't want anybody to stand up and defend me at all. I'm just going to play possum and play dead, or maybe I'm just going to run away, you know, but I don't want anybody to help defend anybody. I don't think anybody's going to say that. Okay, I really don't think so. I really, really don't. Okay, and that kind of helps bring it full circle as, again, to why I carry a gun, why, you know, most people that are in that, and I think most people are in that, in that uh, responsible citizen sheepdog kind of thing, most of us want to be that, that guy that can be a little crazy if he needs to. Okay, crazy, whatever, if he needs to. In general, all the folks... I really haven't ran across anybody that's really just a nutcase that carries a gun. Most everybody that I know that carries a gun, and I, the only reason I say most is I can't think of anybody right now, but I'd say everybody that I know that carries a gun, they are, they're level-headed people, all right? They're very responsible. That's why I say responsible citizen. They're very responsible. They're very level-headed. They're very nice. They're kind, whatever. You know, they, they'd be a good friend. They're good folks in general. I mean, they're good. All right, nobody's good, good, good but God, but you know what I'm saying, okay? But most all of them that I know that really carry a gun and they carry it for real, it's not just like, yeah, I have one and it's sitting in my house and whatever. No, people that actually carry a gun, they have a switch. And I believe any and all of them would be willing to flip that switch off and, and to go to bat for you if something was to happen, okay? So this kind of answered the question, and I never really even asked the question because the question was so vague as like, why do I carry a gun? Do I actually think that I'm like, you know, am I a vigilante person that I think I am because I carry a gun? Or do all you Second Amendment people think this stuff? I can't speak for the whole Second Amendment community or everybody that I know that carries a gun. I can speak for myself. And no, to answer those questions, no, I don't think I'm Rambo. But if it came down to it, I would hope that I could flip a switch and do business like Rambo did if that had to happen. 
okay? Because there's a certain level after you pass a certain threshold and you're killing people, I'm not going to sit there and try to talk you out of it. I'm going to stop you from doing that. You see what I'm saying? And then again, that's why I carry a gun. Just for to protect myself. I'm not paranoid, but I'm also not naive. I don't believe that everybody out there is nice. I don't believe that everybody out there has good intentions for fellow mankind. Okay, there's evil people and there's evil in this world and folks get hurt and people get killed. So that's why I carry a gun. But I hope right. that answers your questions if you ask the question and if the question was vague enough for you to understand. So anyway, I'll let y'all go. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you subscribing. Um, if you did watch it all the way to the end, that's that's awesome. Let me know what you think below. If you What group do you think you're in? Did, did I go too harsh on the on the prepper people? I really don't think I did. But I mean, let me know what y'all think. If you have any questions about this stuff, let me know. Um, I'll do my best to answer. Again, it's hard to read people if you give me scenario kind of stuff because every scenario is different for every individual, you know. But let me know what y'all think. Appreciate it. Y'all be good to be safe. Catch you in the next video.